Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of... We don't have that exciting of a life. This is the top of a Pepsi bottle. So I just wanted to say something about the money from taxes. I'm not going to say exactly where it's coming from, and what the source is for it, or how much it is. Because, see, look, if my sister would have would have helped take care of our mother, if she would have stepped forward and done what was the right thing to do, she'd get half of it. Now, after I left Texas, if she would have continued helping, or if she would have just stepped in and started helping. If she would have stepped in and started helping, she'd still get half. If she would have stepped in before I left, not knowing I was leaving, of course, I didn't know I was leaving, um, she could have get, had like 75% of it. But she didn't step forward. She didn't do the right thing. She is making a choice. She has made a decision. She says, well, you don't know me, uh, Cindy. I know you. You're my sister. We grew up together. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's easy dealing with all the things that have to be dealt with. It's not easy. It has not been easy. As a matter of fact, I just sent a letter to the nursing home with information concerning the prepaid funeral plan and I brought up uh, the uh, I, I want to do not resuscitate order for our mother I, I mean look when, when I saw her when we saw her my wife and I saw her I felt really bad You know, even my worst enemies, I don't want bad for them. Anyway, so I know my sister's capable of stepping in and doing the right thing. She's made a conscious decision not to do what's right. Therefore, I don't think she should have any of this money. It's not a whole lot of money. It would make a big difference in our lives is we get some things taken care of. And I don't, I need to call my uncle, see if he's done anything about it. I'm not going to call him at midnight. But, <laughs> but, um. It's only 2 o'clock in the morning where he's at. Yeah. Same time Wake as us. Up. Same time as us. Wake him up. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, I sent my sister a Christmas card. Will she open it? I don't know. I hope she does. Cindy, you're my sister. I love you. I hate this estrangement. It's not an estrangement that I want. It's not something that I've caused. It's something you're doing out of choice. I, I mean, I, I wish, I mean, look, to be honest with you, if you were to step in at this point in time, I think you'd be, only be doing it to get some money, and uh, you're not getting a penny of it at this point. I still think it would only be right for you to step in and start helping. When she dies, I'm going to call you. I'm going to make a phone call to you. I'm going to let you know. You know, our uncle in Virginia, our Uncle Frank, he calls the nursing home every now and then. And I've made a few phone calls. And I, my wife and I visited. Carolyn and I visited. When I was still living in San Antonio, I went by the nursing home from time to time. I wish you would uh, step up and do what's right.
you know, do you realize you you've you've become like her? You're like our mom. I mean, do you realize that? Is that really what you want to be? I think, you know, from my experiences in life, from what one of the counselors at Solera said, I think she was probably bipolar, or mum. And I had old driver's licenses of hers that I sent to our uncle. And she looked depressed. I mean, she really looked depressed in those pictures. It was her decision not to get any help or not to get the right help. I remember not too long before I realized she was sick, she did say something to me. She apologized for having yelled so much when we were growing up. I, I, I wonder if maybe she realized that she was getting sick and... I don't know. She was trying to make amends before she died, before she got ill. I mean, it's like she's the walking dead now. Alzheimer's an awful, awful thing. I don't wish it on anybody. I wish I could share the money with you, Cindy, but the way you've acted with all this I'm just it's not going to happen um, and if I said how much it was or the source of it um, I'd be afraid you'd try and finagle your way into to get all of it I, mean, I, I would love to get it before Christmas so I can finish buying Carolyn's gifts for her and I could buy some things that I was hoping to buy for myself and would still have some money over to get the license plate. I need to call my uncle to find out if he's done anything with it. I mean, I was waiting until after his eye surgery. But, um... Because he had to have time for his eyes to readjust or something. But, um... You know, I miss you, see. I miss you. Um, I don't know if you'd like living up here. It gets cold. I mean, right now it's 41 degrees. Although it always feels colder because it never really warms up except in the summertime. Uh, it's wet outside, and as soon as the temperature gets to freezing everything's going to be frozen there's nothing going to be nothing but ice out there but you lived in Iowa for a while with your girlfriend you think I'm so dumb that I, I don't realize you're a lesbian you think I'm not going to accept you because you're a lesbian or maybe you're bi I don't I don't really know I mean, how am I supposed to know? You don't communicate with anybody. Uncle Frank would love to hear from you. Cousin Trish would love to hear from you. Our cousin Dawn would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. No. You know, there's this show on right now. What I'd love for us to do is get at least five acres of land up in Coos County, way north in New Cary, build a cabin, actually build a hobbit house. A friend of ours in um, Canada, he said, don't worry about the money, we'll work that kind of thing out. You, he said, you get the land, um, and we'll work out everything else. So that would be nice. Uh, I like living in a small town, and I guarantee you I prefer up here over Texas any day of the week. 
Anyway, so Cindy, I don't know what else to say. I just don't know what else to say. I wish you were in my life. I wish you were a part of our mother's life. I have this very odd feeling because people in our family die on their birthdays. You know, our great great uncle, Charles Cuthrell, died a hundred weeks, died, excuse me, one hundred years and one week before my birthday. Our dad died on his birthday. Our granddad, Connor, died on our dad's birthday. Well, our dad was in Vietnam. Birthdays. And our dad died, what was it, like a month after my 18th birthday? I just have this strange feeling that our mother's about to die. And that it's going to happen on her birthday and it's only a few months away. If I find, uh, I'm going to find out the name of the company that has the prepaid funeral plan that she has a prepaid funeral plan through, because I called them and tried to talk to them, and this lady was nothing but rude and obnoxious with me. All I was trying to do was find out how much was owed, what we could do to change the plan from burial to cremation, and she wouldn't say anything to me. She just would not answer any questions. She just refused. She was just rude. And um, so maybe the funeral home will be able to get an answer. Maybe my uncle can get an answer through one of his friends or connections. I don't know, but you know, Cindy, I'm still here.